Good day, YouTube. It is the 26th of May, 2023. This is a new acquisition for me. If you've watched my channel, you know I have quite the relationship with Honda EU Series generators. I have many. Uh, 7,000 of a couple 3,000s, a couple 2,000s. And this is my fourth EU 1000. Uh, number four. I just picked this up a couple days ago. And the content of this video is going to be, okay, you bought a used generator, now what? Okay. Um, I use these in my mobile DJ business. And on Saturday last week, so today is Friday, so six days ago, um, I set up in a small town near here and uh, did uh, music and announced a parade. Um, I had a great time. I had three setups in my mobile DJ business where I was running sensitive electronic equipment, amplifiers, receivers, tuners, transmitters, mixer boards, computer, and you name it. And these are my workhorses um, during my DJ season. And in fact, during that parade, I had three of these in operation. My Mystery Machine van is my studio, my mobile studio. It has a computer, the mixer, an amplifier, equalizer, transmitter, wireless microphone controller, all of the above. None of those are high power draw items and the EU-1000 will run that thing perfectly. In fact, I could run two amplifiers with all of that equipment and still get by with a 1000. I actually broadcast to two speaker locations. One, I have this tower that goes up 20 feet in the air, has four speakers on it, a receiver, an amplifier, etc. I run another EU-1000 on that. I have another location I call a remote. It's actually a, a wheeled scaffold that I can push around anywhere. It has a couple speakers on it and a receiver and an amplifier, etc. And I run another EU-1000 on it. Um, and I was wrapped up after the parade and after uh, I did a little uh, music at one end of town, um, I was done down there. And I didn't want to leave my generator just sitting down there, but I needed to shut the music off for the rest of the day. So I shut her all down. I grabbed my generator and packed it back to my van, two city blocks. During that two city blocks, I'm thinking, isn't it nice that these are like 29 pounds? That I have this nice lightweight generator. I mean, I love these. I love these. I love these. But even an EU 2000 is like 50 or 55 pounds or something. It would have been a little bit strenuous walking two city blocks with these generators. People say, oh, you need to convert them to propane. I said, oh, great. Now I've got a propane tank to pack around as well. And I have to take these down and set them up, and then I have to bring them back and such. So these, these are perfect. They're absolutely perfect. And I usually carry a spare. Not that I've ever needed one, but I usually carry a spare, say something goes bad, or I end up needing to do something that I didn't plan to do, and I need one more generator for that. So I packed four generators, three EU-1000s and one of my EU-2000s as a spare. So I thought, well, wouldn't it be nice to grab another one of the 1000s? And uh, I'm kind of a bargain hunter. Yes, I've bought a few of these new over the years. Actually, quite a few of them new. But I've bought a few of these secondhand as well. But they've got to be 100% reliable. And I take excellent, excellent care of these. And if you've, again, watched my videos, you know that every Thanksgiving day, all of my generators get serviced and the fuel changed out. I will never put anything but non-ethanol premium fuel in my generators, but every November, whatever, 28th or whatever Thanksgiving is, they get serviced. I change the fuel, change the oil if needed, clean them, service them, you know, get them all shiny again and get the dirt off of them. And then all of my generators have a Honda silver cover to keep them in good condition. I bought this generator for $275. That is a bargain. $200 is as cheap as I've ever bought one, and it didn't work properly. This one runs fine, or it did when I bought it. So 
Uh, I've only run it at the uh, seller's house. So let's fire this up, make sure it still runs good. And then we're going to completely service this machine. Here we go. Let's pop her open and see what she looks like. It's nice and clean in there. This is as much as I've done so far as pop it open. In fact, I bought it from a guy that does wheel and deal in small engine items. I've not checked the oil till now. Oh, geez. It's full and then full. It's over full. Come on, thread back in there. Woohoo. Yeah, it's a little bit too much oil in there. Uh oh. Houston! All right. We've made a mess already. First thing this morning. So, let me grab my. service tools and we'll get the oil out of this thing I know it didn't seem like it but uh, it took a minute to drain all my drain pans you better had to go buy more I just they all had oil in them <laughs> okay so I have a whole box full of nice little tools for the service in these generators I don't know what I did with it I did a major shop cleanup and at the moment I can't find it so what I do have is this filler tube is designed to go in where the dipstick is and allow you to fill oil we're going to use that to drain the oil because i can't find my oil drain tube it's nice aluminum metal red yeah the oil in this looks really good but we don't know what it is how long it's been in here it's obviously too full so out it goes we've i've got to know that it's right okay just thread that in there hand tight um, I know it's a little weird but I use uh, my tool drawer for my drain pan can you see what's going on All right. And then we just make sure we don't fall off the edge here. Just flip her over. This hole's like a half a quart or something. There's probably an exact measurement, but it isn't much. Nice thing is this oil's pretty new. A lot of times when I get an old generator, when you really don't know and the oil's real black, I'll put new oil in it. We'll run it for an hour or so, and then we'll drain it out and change it again. I don't think we have to go there with this um, because it's nice and clean. So we'll put fresh oil in it. We're just running, I just run 1030 conventional oil in it. Um, I change it often. So dirt is its biggest enemy. Okay. That's that. Let me dump this oil out because I'm tired of leaving pans full of oil. All right, next thing we're going to do is dump the gas out of it. And I mean dump it over here. You see the funnel? Yeah. Oil in one can, gas in another. We're going to spin the cap off. And we're going to dump it. We don't know what's in it. There ain't much in it. But we don't want it in there no more. Drain the oil first, gas second. All right. Put that cap back on there. Now then, hello. Let's have a peek 
at the air filter. Okie dokie. Um, as far as spark plugs, you can say what you want. I don't change them unless they, for some reason, run bad. I don't change them. That air filter is perfect. That is perfect. And that's great to see. For the money, this thing is new. I love it. Love these generators. You're going to hear that a lot from me. What the? Am I doing it? Oh, geez, Glenn. Backwards! Okay. Now then, let's put some oil in this thing. We're about done. All right, let's tip her back a little bit so we get a little better angle on the dangle. What are we going to prop it up with? About this big old ratchet. Yeah. yeah, that'll work. We'll get her back there a little bit. We're going to fill this almost to the end of the threads. Where the dipstick goes. It's around a half a quart. Let's see what that is. Use what you want. I'm at 1030 Chevron Supreme. I might be right there. Before I take that out of there, I'm going to put a paper towel in place. to catch the spiel. I thought I was a little short, but I'm definitely a little long. Yeah, there's a quicker way to do this without making a mess. We'll pour just a tiny bit out. It's just a little bit, like a ounce over. Okay. Let's check it. These are handy little tools. <laughs> I wish I had the one for draining it. It's here somewhere. It's just a little over. I've got a little cup up here I keep this in. Oh, you know what? There it is. It's inside that cup. This is the one I have for draining it. It was in that little cup. Dang. Okay. There it is. Okay, I'm going to let this thing level itself out. Alright, stick this side cover back on. Then we're going to clean this thing up a little bit. We are, we are. All right, uh, I took these four screws out. We're going to uh, check the spark arrestor on this. Come on, there we go. That's going to be a 10 millimeter. What do we got over here? Is that a 10? They can get plugged up over time, so. Oop, one at the bottom. Wrong one. Uh, 
it's probably a good thing we had a look. So this is the spark arrester. It's just a screen and it's pretty black. Um, we're just going to clean this out with some uh, carburetor cleaner. Okay. So this whole thing just takes a minute to do. You can see the black coming off on my hands. We'll spray it down a little bit there. We'll hit it with a stainless brush. These screens are kind of folded over at the end, so it doesn't breathe all the way through the end because it's got like four layers of screen. Just be gentle. You can get new ones for like 15 bucks, but you can just clean them. There we go. Let me get a towel. And I'll show it to you again. This only takes, you know, five minutes to clean this. And then you're good to go for another hundred hours or so. See there? Pretty good. Put her back. Right. Insert spark arrester. Pretty little muffler. I'd say this was a low hour machine. It doesn't have the blinky lights that says how many hours is on it. I did check that. But, uh, I mean, you can tell. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to know. She's been lightly used. She's going to be a great addition to my fleet of generators. Okay. We're not going to give them all the torques with this. We're going to give them all the torques with a ratchet. A rascally ratchet. Torques. Click. Click. Just put the cover back on. If you're gonna do one, do it right. Again, I don't put spark plugs in them. These things got great ignition systems in them. They don't wear the spark plugs. I've got 15 year old generators. I use them all the time. They never had a spark plug put in it. If I felt like it hurt it in any way, I would, but they don't. Click. Let's uh, run them with a manual screwdriver. Make sure they don't rattle off. Okay. Put some fuel in it, and we're gonna clean it up. Time to put some gas in this little baby. And uh, all my generators annually get serviced, like I said, at Thanksgiving Day, and all of them get sea foam. Okay once a year this is be no exception this is going to be part of my fleet so it's an exact science of how much you put in there that's the correct amount we'll seal that up put some non-ethanol premium fuel in it i filled this can a little full so it might be a slow road oh we're getting there I like these little one gallon cans, so these little generators only hold two quarts. And for me, I'll run this generator for a, like a five hour, six hour day running my equipment and it will not run out. So if the generator was full when I started and I have one gallon of fuel, it'll likely refill the generator for me three times. Again, I don't run it out. This is missing the screen, which isn't a big deal. I know you can get them. I just noticed that it's gone. But sometimes they can be a pain. 
also. But I might get one. It'd be correct. The nice thing about dumping the fuel out, if there was any water, moisture in it, it is gone. It, that's full. Okay, let's uh, fire it up. Run it for a minute, and then we're going to clean it up. Guessing we won't need to choke. Yeah, won't hurt it. Nope. This upside down, remember? I breached my chair. <clears throat> now, if this generator was new enough. When I start it, this green light would flash at how many hundreds of hours is on it. I think I've already looked at this and it did not flash at all, so it's a little older model, I guess. Right. She's a winner. All right, let's get some stuff and clean it up. All right, here we go. Um, I use Westie's white wall cleaner as a general purpose cleaner. Buy it by the gallon. I have three or four of these. Um, very, very good. I like it. Cuts the grease real nice. Doesn't hurt stuff. Cut it all done there. Just going to use a sponge, not the scrubby side, just a sponge. Okay. Got some goop down here. We'll hit it harder with a pressure washer on that side. Normally when I'm done, I would armor all this thing, but I'm not going to do this one because I don't think the decals are nice enough for me to live with. So we're probably going to put new decals on it. And I don't want armor all on this thing. Make them decals fall off. So. Uh, let's hit it. Little paint splatters coming right off. Right. Well, gang. That is a nice addition to my generator collection. It'll be an, another one of my workhorses. I said in the beginning, I love these things. All right, let me uh, do one more thing. It's not quite finished. All right, almost done. I went to get a new cover 
and uh, they didn't have one. At two stores, they didn't have one. So this is off one of my other ones. I'll have to order one online. But all my generators have covers, so they don't get scuffed. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Appreciate the comments. Subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you on the next video.